One way to answer the question of whether a computer can actually think is to do the hard work of understanding what human thinking is. That is to say, once we understand the true nature of human intelligence, we'll be able to see that a computer, no matter how sophisticated, will never be able to be actually intelligent, will never be able to actually think. But this is no easy task, since the question of human intelligence is a properly philosophical question. It's not a question that can be answered by the cognitive sciences. And philosophy is just hard. To know the true nature of our human understanding, we must know our true nature as human beings. And to know our true nature as human beings, we must know in what ways humans are like and unlike other beings in the world. And to know this, we must know the nature of being as such, or being as being. The truth of what it means to be an intelligent human being, therefore, cannot be adequately known apart from engaging in metaphysics. Thus, the truth of the aphorism, to ask one philosophical question is, in a way, to ask them all. Of course, this kind of deep metaphysical analysis of human nature can be done. In fact, it has been done, and done exceptionally well, by philosopher Edward Fazer in his 500-plus page book, Immortal Souls, a treatise on human nature. If you'd like a thorough understanding of human intelligence, and one that, incidentally, rules out the possibility of machine intelligence, you should read this book. There is, however, another, more direct way to answer the question of whether a computer can actually think or be intelligent. It's a much easier way, actually, and, and one that can be understood by anyone, and apart from extended philosophical argument. Rather than considering the nature of human intelligence, which, as I say, will inevitably take us deep into metaphysics, we can instead consider the nature of a computer and computation. That is, we can answer the question as to whether computers or machines that operate by engaging in computation can actually think simply by examining the nature of a computer. Because a computer is an artifact designed and made by humans, Understanding its nature will be far easier than grappling with human nature. Now, Fazer himself lays out this easier, more direct way in his book, Immortal Souls. So in this episode, I'd like to show you this simple argument that Fazer provides against the idea of machine intelligence. Fazer's basic claim is this, quote, Properly to understand what a computer is, in the first place, ought to enable one to see why it really makes no sense to suppose that the intellect might be a kind of computer, end quote. What Phaser is opposing is computational models of thought, where the mind is viewed as a kind of software that runs on a kind of hardware that is the brain. Thinking on this model is just computing, and thus computing is a kind of thinking. The computational understanding of the mind is a primary driver for the belief that machine intelligence is possible, for the belief that artificial intelligence can become actual intelligence. So according to Phaser, we can easily dispel this misplaced belief simply by considering what a computer is. Phaser borrows a definition of a computer from philosopher Tim Crane. A computer is a machine that processes representations systematically according to rules. This is another way to say that computers process representations by running algorithms. In simple terms, an algorithm is a step-by-step -step set of instructions for solving a problem or completing a task. Now, obviously, it's not just computers that do this. Humans, too, can and do consciously utilize algorithms all the time. You run an algorithm every time you follow directions for assembling patio furniture or when you follow instructions for clearing up space on your hard drive. The activity of humans and computers are analogous in this sense. They can both follow algorithms to solve problems or to complete tasks. As Phaser points out, it's important to see that algorithms are effective procedures. That is, they guarantee a correct outcome simply by following a finite number of explicitly articulated rules with no insight or special knowledge required beyond the rules themselves. Algorithms can be utilized to accomplish complex tasks for which we have no direct and relevant knowledge. In other words, they can be followed mechanically. In his book, Phaser provides the example of someone who follows an algorithm or procedure for finding the answer to any multiplication problem that only relies on addition. 
By following the steps in the algorithm, a person can derive the correct answers for the multiplication problems without having any understanding of multiplication itself. And we can, of course, multiply examples. Consider that someone who doesn't know anything about cooking or culinary theory can nevertheless prepare a complex dish simply by following the step-by-step -step instructions in a cookbook. Although a person has to have some basic abilities, like being able to read, and basic understanding when it comes to operating an oven and stove and measuring ingredients and so forth, she does not require any specific culinary training or knowledge to perform the task. Simply by following step-by-step -step instructions, measuring, chopping, sauteing, plating, and so on, she can execute the dish even though she lacks a deeper culinary understanding of what she's doing. Even if she doesn't understand, for example, cooking techniques, flavor profiles, ingredient interactions, and so on. Now, it's important to see that the behavior a person engages in when preparing the food by following the cookbook instructions will make it appear as if the person actually has culinary understanding. If you were to observe the activity of the person, let's say it's your friend preparing the meal, and you couldn't see that your friend was, in fact, reading from a cookbook, it would seem to you that your friend knew or understood what it is that he was doing. After watching your friend at work and, and tasting the food prepared for you, you may say something like this. This is amazing food. I didn't know you knew how to cook. And your friend, if they were honest, would reply, I don't know anything about cooking. I just followed the instructions in the cookbook. Algorithms then allow us to complete tasks for which we have no requisite understanding, all the while behaving as if we had the requisite understanding. And as we noted, a computer is essentially a machine that follows algorithms. And to be more accurate, modern computers are machines that follow layers upon layers of highly complicated algorithms. And again, because both computers and humans can follow algorithms, they are to that extent similar. There is, however, a massive difference between a machine that follows an algorithm on the one hand and a human that follows an algorithm on the other. And it's a difference that makes all the difference. To see what that difference is, let's go back to the example of a person cooking a dish by following instructions from a cookbook. Let's imagine that somebody creates a sufficiently sophisticated robot that can run an algorithm to perform the same task of cooking the dish. At once, I think we can see the critical difference between these two cases. When the human follows the algorithm for cooking, she may not understand what she's doing on a culinary level, but she does understand the instructions in the cookbook. The human understands what a cookbook is, what the instructions mean, what they're intended for, why they work, and so on. Moreover, the human intends to follow the cookbook instructions for the sake of making the dish. Like the human, the robot too does not understand what it's doing at the culinary level. But unlike the human, the robot also does not understand the set of instructions that it is following. The robot doesn't know what an algorithm is, what the coding means, what the code is for, why following the code works, and so on. And again, unlike the human, the robot does not intend to follow the algorithm for the sake of making the dish or for the sake of anything at all. Rather, it just mechanically transitions through states based on inputs and outputs. So while the human may not be fully understanding what she's doing when she's cooking, she does nevertheless understand the cooking instructions. The robot neither understands what it's doing when it's cooking, nor the algorithm it's following while cooking. A human can follow an algorithm for cooking because she understands it. A robot can follow an algorithm for cooking only because human designers and programmers have constructed it to perform operations that parallel those of a human. Whatever understanding there is in computer algorithms resides in the intellects of their human creators. In our example, the human behaves as if she understands culinary art, while all she really understands are the instructions in the cookbook or the algorithm. The robot or computer also behaves only as if it understands culinary art and only as if it understands the algorithm. Thus, although by following algorithms, computers may behave as if they understand what they're doing. In truth, they neither understand what they're doing nor do they understand the algorithms by which they are doing what they are doing. 
computers do not understand. Again, they can behave as if they understand, only because human beings who actually have understanding have designed and constructed them to mimic how humans behave when humans follow algorithms. And so here we've come to the very simple reason why it makes no sense to say that the human intellect may be a kind of computer, or to say that a computer can be something that actually thinks. For the way a computer works, writes Phaser, is to generate outputs that are similar to those an intellect would produce, but precisely in a way that requires no intellect actually to be present. Hence, a computer qua computer can, in the nature of the case, only ever mimic or simulate an intellect and never actually amount to one, end quote. Intellect is totally absent from the operation of machines. All the understanding necessary for a machine to operate is external to the machine itself and in the minds of those humans who design and use the machines. In constructing computers that function by means of algorithms, we do not thereby endow them with intelligence. Rather, we substitute for intelligence. Writes Phaser, quote, computer algorithms of their nature subtract intellect from the picture so that it is incoherent to suppose that to put such an algorithm into a machine would be to add intellect to it, or that the human intellect might itself be a kind of computer algorithm, end quote. Now, you might think that for all that we've said here, we still haven't proved that machines can't really think or be actually intelligent. For all we know, maybe computers can think after all. I mean, it seems logically possible, and nothing we've said so far explicitly rules it out. But as Phaser points out, this kind of response completely misses the point. Remember, it is precisely because we know what a computer is, and precisely because we know how a computer does what it does, that we can know that it's not actually thinking. In other words, if you believe that a computer can think, you can't point to its functions or behavior as evidence for that fact, because we already know that those functions and behaviors operate in the absence of understanding. Phaser explains, quote, even if we concede for the sake of argument that machines might think, that would not undermine my argument. For the point is that the fact that the machine's behavior conforms to an algorithm does not provide any evidence whatsoever that it is thinking. For the simple reason that we know that it does so, not because of anything the machine by itself is capable of, but rather because of the way its human makers have designed it. Hence, if one wanted to show that the machine was thinking, one would need to appeal to something other than the fact that its behavior conforms to an algorithm, end quote. Phaser goes on to provide a helpful analogy to drive this point home. Consider that good illusionists, like Penn and Teller, are good precisely because they can produce effects that appear to be or give the illusion of being the result of magic. Now, we all know that what they're doing is not actually performing magic, but rather cleverly and skillfully simulating the effects of magic, even if we don't know how they're pulling off the illusion. Now, consider that it is precisely because we know that this is what illusionists are up to, that we can know that no matter how convincing, the effects of their illusions cannot be the result of magic. In other words, because we know that illusionists simulate magic, we cannot point to what they do as evidence for the existence of magic. Phaser draws out the analogy when he writes, quote, Similarly, even if machines could be intelligent, what modern computers do cannot itself be evidence for this, because what they do too is mere simulation. The simulation of a thing, no matter how convincing, cannot establish its reality, end quote. Okay, let's summarize the basic argument here. A computer is a machine that functions according to algorithms. We've seen that algorithms allow for the substitution of intelligence in the performing of tasks. A human can follow an algorithm to perform some tasks without having the relevant understanding, all the while behaving as if possessed of the relevant understanding. Though the human may not understand the task being performed, the human does understand the algorithm that's being used to perform it. So with humans, there's always some intelligence involved in the following of an algorithm. 
Not so with machines. Machines neither understand the tasks performed nor the algorithms by which they perform them, though they behave as if they understood both. As Phaser says, the machine's behavior is thus doubly removed from actual intelligence. He concludes, quote, Hence it is quite absurd to suggest that doing what a computer does might suffice to generate the operations of an intellect. That is one thing we can be quite certain is not happening, end quote. So despite the ridiculous things people say today about AI, machines, no matter how sophisticated, can only ever simulate human intelligence. And they can do this not because of anything internal to the machines themselves, but only because humans who have actual intelligence have designed and constructed them with that end in mind.